how are you going? It is so good to see you. I've just been watching the Canon live announcement. Started here at 10 p.m. We're now just heading towards 12 p.m. as I record this. I wanted to get it out as quickly as possible. I think we have all just witnessed some of the biggest news in the photography industry in a very long time. Canon have made a big single leap with the release of the R5. There is the R6 as well, which is a competent and great camera, but the wow factor is with the R5. It's an exciting time. We've all really known the specs, but I suppose if you're like me, it's not really real until you actually see them and it's formally acknowledged and you see it at work and you see it happening. So the Canon R5, 8K video, raw, up to 30 frames per second. They didn't talk about a time, but uh, it looks like it could possibly go up to 30 minutes depending on overheating, which has been talked about. Now, of course, that's no big deal because it's in such a small form factor and you don't have to pay $50,000 to buy yourself a red. Now, the R5 is about $3,900 in the US and I've already seen it here in Australia for $6,400 odd dollars. For what this camera does, it seems like a very fair price. Uh, it's a 45 megapixel sensor, so it comes in exactly the same as the D850 and the Z7 in the Nikon space, the A7R 3 in the Sony space. And then, of course, you get all the famous glass that Canon are very well known for. It shoots at 20 frames per second with an electronic shutter and 12 frames per second with a real shutter. Really, this is an all-rounder camera and, of course, it takes us back to that very massive moment where Canon released the 5D Mark II, which also was a real game-changer camera for its video making chops and that was 1080p we are now 1080p 4k 8k speaking of 4k 4k runs at 120 frames per second look these are some of the highlight specs at the end of the day we're all going to know these specs very quickly i'm mostly more interested in talking about what does this mean for the industry now People will obviously say this is, uh, you know, this is going to knock Nikon and Sony out of the park and they should all be very worried about it. Absolutely true. But the camera company I happen to be most afraid for, and this might seem counterintuitive, is Sony. Sony have had a head start. And with that head start, we've got great cameras like the A7R4 and the A9 II. But I think Canon has clearly caught up and surpassed those cameras in regards to its 8K and shooting speeds and so on. And this R5 is such an all-rounder. It's kind of a little bit an A9 and a little bit uh, probably what we might see in the A7S III or the A7 IV. Uh, these cameras are rumored to be coming very soon. But the problem I have for Sony is, is I don't think any one of their cameras will be as competent as the R5. Sure, the A7R4 is 60 megapixels, but really that's not that much more. And sure, the A7S III or the A7IV might be 8K. Now this reminds me of what Nikon did with the D850 in making the best all-round DSLR in 2017 before mirrorless had hotted up to the point where it is today, where it's just at fever pitch. This was considered the best all-rounder of cameras in that era, a very short-lived era, but it had that mantle for that time. And it is still, it still holds that mantle, but in the stills space, not really in the all-rounder space slash mirrorless, of course, as it's not. So I'm worried for Sony because this is a bit of a knockout punch all in one camera. And why I'm less worried for Nikon is because basically Nikon can do their own version of this absolutely no problem. They've already got the Z7, which is the same number of megapixels, 
almost 46 and they've already got 4k for them to bring 4k 120 i don't think would be a problem and if they can do 4k 120 well that would mean they can do 8k as well now the only place that nikon may struggle of course is being a little bit behind in the focusing stakes and certainly the focus looked absolutely outstanding on the canon and when i say focus i don't mean the capacity to focus of course i mean body tracking eye tracking face tracking animal tracking all that stuff looks spectacular but we do know with the nikon z6s and the z7s which are rumored to be coming in the next three or so months they're putting two processors in those cameras instead of one and that processor will be aimed at processing that sort of information quicker and also could give us superior video chops although i do think nikon's r5 is not going to be the a7s so i think it's going to be the z8 and we might have to wait up to another year before we actually see it and we might have to wait three to six months before we hear about it but it can happen i think it will happen and i think nikon are sort of 75 percent of the way there already so yes i actually think as much as it's counterintuitive and it might set the comments on fire that sometimes the hardest place to be is in the lead because then everyone can come up from behind and leapfrog you and i think that's where it's going to be at for sony now and they're going to have to think about how do they create an r5 style camera now sony do have a bit of a reputation for banging out cameras super fast i don't think we'd see an a7r5 that would do this but we might it's possible and it's really interesting to see what will the a7 4b it could be a bit of an r5 will they go 8k look it's super interesting times um, but yes the leader is always the one that's most at threat i think canon have just landed and this is a product leading market leading tent pole camera we've got to pay kudos where it's due absolutely true it's very exciting and uh but this game is moving fast and it's aggressive and we will see sony and nikon come back over the next three to 12 months because it's always been like this like uh for those who maybe haven't been around in the industry very long there was always one ahead the canon was always ahead of nikon and then nikon was ahead of canon and they've leapfrogged each other really for the last 30 or 40 years the cycles were slower I can see this happening very fast with three players in the game and a shrinking market and a desire to capture market share and people's attention. This is going to be fast moving. Watch out that you don't get whiplash. All right, everybody. I just wanted to quickly touch and share my opinions. The Canon R5 is an absolutely amazing camera. Uh, just as an aside, I don't think it's that important, to be honest, but there were a couple of lenses announced. There was an 85 F2 why not it'll be cheap it looks pretty good oh yes the 100 to 500 looks like an interesting lens bit of an all-rounder lens will capture the lower end of the market which of course is well see these th it's interesting the three lenses all four lenses are affordable versions of lenses so the 100 to 500 that'll be affordable and then these very unusual the 600 and the 800 millimeter lenses f11 f11 bold move and uh but they're small and light and i suppose they'll be affordable to match uh, interesting stuff there's so much to talk about and unpack but this is where it started this stuff's out and um i mean i'm so excited I've, I've said a lot on this channel i personally have a use case for 8k so that alone makes me excited about this camera but i don't want to have to start investing in canon glass and going through all of that so as much as I'm really excited about it and would like to play with it, I believe Nikon will rise to the occasion over the next six to 12 months. Fingers crossed. All right, everybody, as usual, it's so good to see you. If this is your first time here and you have liked what you've seen, I'd love to see you again. So please subscribe, please share, please like, and uh, I'll catch you later. I mean, aren't these things amazing? That over there, that is the amazing R5. And that is the well competent and well priced R6 that can do some really cool things. All right, see ya.